Hey guys, it's Charles Jaeger from Metal, and in this tutorial, we're gonna experiment with a few different 3D slice landscape designs using GeoLayers 3 with Metal Freeform Pro, and also using Metal Flux to create some abstract looks. And as always, you guys can download a free trial of all three of these plugins from aescripts.com. I'm also gonna have the project file that I create for this tutorial available for download on the Metal blog, so check for that link in the description. All right guys, let's go ahead and jump over to After Effects. Okay, first thing we need to do is open up GeoLayers 3. So come over here to Window, go over to Extensions and GeoLayers 3. That should open up the GeoLayers panel over here. I'm gonna go ahead and close up the startup screen. And now what we're gonna be creating is based off of the GeoLayers tutorial where they did a 3D sliced landscape. We're gonna create a landscape like that and then do a few other customizations to that. If you haven't checked out that tutorial, I highly recommend it. So let's go ahead and quickly set up our 3D sliced landscape. So I'm just gonna click on the Create 3D Landscape icon. And I'm gonna have the frame rate be 24. And then for the duration, I'm gonna set it to be 10 seconds. And then for the texture size, I'm actually gonna lower this to be 1,024 pixels. And for the height map size, I'm gonna crank this all the way up to 512. And then I'm gonna select to create this with Metal Freeform Pro, so the first option here. And that's gonna go ahead and create our 3D landscape for us automatically. And I'm gonna come over here to the composition window here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Let's set this up to full resolution. So now we can start to see our 3D landscape. I'm gonna adjust the camera settings here so we can angle this a little bit easier so you can see we have the camera pitch, bearing, and elevation here. Let's start with the pitch. I'm gonna select that, hit R. And then for the X rotation here, I'm just gonna rotate a little bit more. I'm gonna set it on like 58. And then for the position here on the elevation for Z, I'm gonna click that and hit P on the keyboard for position. And I'm gonna set this down to negative 70 just to lower that just a little bit. Now for our location, I'm just gonna do this at the default one here because I like these mountains, but if you wanna type in a new location, you can search it right here and it'll automatically update that. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit here on this current location so we can kind of see this. And this is gonna be my ending point. I want this to animate, kind of zooming in here so the landscape on this little slicer kind of changes. It almost looks like a liquid appearance when we do a few things with it later. So I'm gonna come out here on my timeline and I'm gonna come out here to three seconds and I'm gonna click on this keyframe icon right here on the GeoLayers panel. And then I'm gonna move the current time indicator back to one second. And I'm gonna zoom out here on this magnifying glass. Probably three times. So you can see we've zoomed out really far. And if we go ahead and scroll over this, we're gonna see this kind of zoom in. So the landscape kind of changes there as that zooms in. Again, this isn't required, which is something I think looks pretty cool. And again, you could do this with another location if you wanted to. I'm just gonna, again, use the default one here because I like these mountains. So once we have this kind of set up, we can go ahead and finalize our GeoLayers comp here. So just come here to this button in the GeoLayers panel where it says finalize, and I'm gonna click that. This is just gonna update our texture map so they look the best for us. And then you'll get this green check mark when everything's finished. Go ahead and click OK. And now we wanna square off the edges of our landscape. You can see it just looks kind of flat here, so we want these to kind of be going down so we kind of see that elevation change and square everything off. So I'm gonna come over here to the height composition here. You can see it's currently locked. I'm gonna unlock all of these and just double click into that one. And once you're inside of this composition, just click on one of these locked layers down here. That way you kind of deselect your current selection because what we wanna do is create a shape layer. So I'm just coming here to the square mask tool here, double click, and we create a square shape layer. Now yours may look a little bit different because of the settings here. For the fill, just make sure it's turned off right there. And then for the stroke, I'm just gonna have this be a solid color here. And we want the stroke color to be black actually, so just make sure it's solid black because we're dealing with a height map. And for the size, I'm gonna set it to two pixels. So you can kind of see that just around the edge there. And this should give us the fall off we need if we come back to our main 3D landscape composition. And now we can see that's happening there. And now we obviously want this to look a bit nicer than having the texture kind of pulled down like that. We want this kind of be like a dirt color or any color you want it to be. So what we're gonna do is come over to the texture map composition here, double click. And then we're essentially gonna repeat the same thing. So I'm just gonna click out here somewhere so that I don't have anything selected. And let's go ahead and create another shape layer with the rectangle tool. Then I'm gonna zoom in here just so I can see this a little bit easier. What we need to do is come up to the stroke, and on this one, I'm gonna change it to be a gradient, linear gradient there. And then for the size, I'm gonna set this to be 12. So it's just a little bit bigger, and we can see that. And then come down here to our shape layer under rectangle, and we're gonna select the gradient stroke. And then for the endpoint, I'm gonna set it to be 
one and then tab one. So both of those values at one. And what this is gonna actually do, you can't see it reflected just yet, or maybe you can, because I have two different colors already selected here. But if you wanna edit the gradient, just select that, and you can select what colors you want this to be. Mine are already default on brown from when I tried out this tutorial earlier. But again, you can change these to any other colors you want. Let's do kind of an extreme example here. You can see the contrasting colors there. So I'm gonna cancel that, so I'm still dealing with a dark brown and a light brown color. So let's go ahead and jump back over to our 3D landscape. And now if I select the rotate Z here, and hit rotate, and just kind of angle this around. You can kind of see the difference there in the landscape color, kind of giving us that shadowed edge. And I'm actually gonna come back down here to position, hit P, and I'm gonna raise this back up actually a little bit. So I may level that back off actually at zero. So now let's come down and select our texture map, which has Freeform Pro applied to it, and come here to the effects controls. And the first option we can adjust here a little bit that I like to do is the elevation. So the default is 100. Sometimes I like to increase this up to something like 120, just to exaggerate the mountain features here a little bit, and it'll exaggerate everything kind of as this animates, you can see here, just to give a little bit more height to the mountains. Now let's create a nebula around our 3D landscape here that we're gonna use for some reflections and something we can see in the background. And we're gonna use Metal Flux to do that. So let's come back over here to the main project panel, and I'm gonna create a new composition. And I'm just gonna call this Flux. And I'm gonna have it be 3840 by 1920. So that's two to one aspect ratio because we're gonna be dealing with an equirectangular nebula that we're gonna create using flux. And I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And I'm gonna zoom out here. Let's go ahead and right click, do a new solid. And just call this flux. Make it comp size and click OK. And with that selected, come to effect. And then come down here to metal and select metal flux. And you won't see anything at first. What we're actually gonna use is a preset. So I'm gonna come here to frame layout, make sure you select monoscopic. And then for the preset, I'm gonna select the starburst. Now, as this is set up right now, this won't really be wrapping around the entire kind of 360 equirectangular image we've created. So what you need to do is adjust the camera in the scene a little bit. So come over here to camera, and you're gonna see the camera position for the Z down here at the bottom is at negative five. I'm gonna set this to be negative two. Just gonna move us a little bit closer kind of into that nebula. Not completely, but this looks a lot nicer. Now one thing you need to make sure you do before we kind of add this to our reflection layer with Metal Freeform Pro, we need to add another layer below Flux here because you can actually see we have a lot of bit of transparency here with the Metal Flux layer and the effect that's happening right now. So I'm gonna come up here and let's just right click and do a new solid. This will be just a black solid, make it comp size, and let's move that below our Flux layer. So it basically fills in that background so we no longer have that transparency coming through. Let's jump back over to our 3D landscape. And then in the project panel here, let's select our flux composition and just apply it at the very bottom of everything here. And we can go ahead and turn off the visibility of that if we want to. Now let's select our texture map composition with Freeform Pro on it. Come back up to the effects controls. And what we wanna to navigate to is the reflection mapping. And you can see we have a reflection layer option here and we have the mapping. So let's change the mapping to be equirectangular. And then for the reflection layer, go ahead and select flux. And immediately you're gonna see a very metallic looking landscape. And this is because our material properties are currently set to have the reflectivity up to 100%. And I'm gonna leave that at 100% for the time being, but if you do wanna adjust it, you can pull that back down and you can see our original landscape. I'm gonna increase this back to 100%. And then with our reflection mapping, if you wanna get different results using that flux layer, you can adjust the rotation here you can kind of see how this reflects differently off of the landscape in some really cool, unique ways. So you can kind of dial this in to taste. I'm gonna set this currently to be at 77. Another option we have with this as well is we come down here on the freeform effect. You can come down to environment. And you're gonna see we have this option for sky dome. So toggle that down and go ahead and enable that to show the sky in the background. And that's gonna be our flux layer in the background there. Right now, it's a little bit difficult to see. So what you can do is adjust the field of view right here. Just pull this out so we can see this option. And you can increase this. And kind of adjust the camera in a cool way where we can actually see the flux layer back there a lot easier. Then we come back up here to our rotation and we can rotate around this and you can kind of see how that's kind of angling that flux layer around our 3D landscape slice. What I'm actually gonna do with this now is I'm actually gonna keyframe the rotate Z here for our camera. 
So I'm just gonna move the current time indicator all the way back to the beginning. You can see our landscape as it kind of zoomed back out. So we kind of see that vast landscape and you can see how that kind of changes over time. So I'm gonna have this be right at the very beginning and for the Z rotation, I'm gonna set this back to zero. And let's just go ahead and keyframe that and then move forward 10 seconds all the way to the end down here. I'm just gonna set this to be one. So if we do a ramp preview on this, we kind of get a slow rotation around everything. We get to see that landscape kind of morph. So that's a neat option you have using Flux kind of for that reflection and environment sky dome layer with your kind of 3D landscape you've created here with GeoLayers and Freeform Pro. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more finessing on this. I'm gonna come back down here. I'm actually gonna turn off the show sky in the background here for Freeform Pro. So we just kind of have our metallic landscape with this black void behind it. Another quick thing I wanna mention that can look really cool, if you wanna add a light in here, you can just right click and do a new light. And I'm just gonna have a point light. And you can move this around your scene. You get some pretty unique looking stuff here with the terrain, especially if you're doing more of a metallic look like this. Again, you don't have to use a metallic look, but you can see how this zooms in, kind of working around the rotation there. You can get some nice shadows with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that light. And again, as I mentioned with our Freeform Pro layer here, if you don't want that reflectivity, you just dial down the reflectivity and you get more of a natural looking terrain landscape, or you can kind of mix it in between. I'm gonna leave this all the way back up to 100. And with this Chrome landscape like this, something I think that looks really cool is adding a glow to this. And you can use the default After Effects glow. However, I'm going to use the Deep Glow plugin from Plugin Everything. It's also available on aescripts.com. It just gives you a really nice glow very quickly. Again, you can dial in and finesse the standard glow effect from After Effects, but again, just for time, I'm gonna use Deep Glow. So with my Freeform layer selected here, let's go up to Effect. And I'm gonna come down here to Plugin Everything, and we're gonna select Deep Glow. I'm gonna dial up the radius here to about 600. And then under the input here, I'm gonna increase this threshold something like 72. So it's pretty faint. You can still see some of the colors kind of coming through there. And I'll just rotate this around. You kind of see the effect this gives us. Almost looks like water kind of uh, with that glow effect coming off and the way it shimmers there. But this looks pretty neat. Almost looks like, like a crypto art type piece for some sort of landscape you might create. I really like the natural fall if you get with deep glow on something like this. And again, because we're using that reflection map, it kind of reflects all differently across the landscape. And if yours doesn't look quite right, or maybe not the way you want it to, again, all you need to do is come back up here to Freeform Pro, and then under the reflection mapping here, just adjust the rotation. You can see how you can kind of just change that. So you can animate this as well. I'll just leave that back on what I had it with 77. Now, once you've already had this set up, something else you can do to get kind of more of a tech HUD-like landscape with this, that the glow is really gonna work well on and kind of accent with our reflection map, is by setting our landscape to be points with Freeform Pro. So let me just demonstrate that really quickly. So if we come down here to the render settings, our render options here, under render mode, it's currently set to full render. Let's go ahead and change this to be points. And if we zoom in here, you can see all these different points across our landscape. And you can see how this will kind of animate across. So this looks pretty neat right now with the current points, kind of a chromatic effect we're getting. And if you needed to at this point, you could always adjust the glow threshold in different ways to get different results, again, because the landscape has changed there. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that and just leave it pretty faint. And I can zoom in here so you can see a little bit more of the fine detailing of everything we've got going on. If you want this landscape to look more kind of like tech colors, a quick and easy way to change that as well. Just gonna be using a tint effect. Let's go ahead and close up Metal Freeform Pro and Deep Glow. Now let's come here to Effect, Color Correction and Tint. And you can see we get kind of a black and white one initially here. You can just change the map white to to be like a teal blue or something like that. And now we scroll through here, we can kind of see, you get a much more digitized looking landscape. Again, using that points option with Freeform Pro and then with that glow, really gives it kind of a digital feel where you can kind of see through the different terrain, get the different lines going through there. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and the experimentation that we did with GeoLayers and Metal Freeform Pro and Flux. And again, you can download my project file from the Metal blog post and I'll catch you guys on the next one.